Greetings friends and neighbors, welcome to New York City where it is a beautiful day. My street feels calm and peaceful. I see the birds flying through the air. But in a few hours that will all change. Anyway, I'm here today to talk about two releases. Sonny Clark, My Conception, and these three test pressings, which I hold in my midi, gritty midi paws, test pressings of Lee Morgan Live at the Lighthouse, the complete 12 LP Blue Note set, which I was really happy to get. First, let's talk about Sonny Clark, My Conception. This has been available as a Japanese import forever, um, and honestly, to tell you the truth, we had it at the store, I think it's still sitting there. People like packaging and they like something new and they like marketing. But this is a great hard bop record. This fits right in to my way of thinking with Caddy for Daddy, uh, Norm for Squares, Donald Byrd, Royal Flush, or Cool Strutton. This is a little more exciting, uplifting, kick ass session than uh, uh, Cool Strutton, which is one of the great records, not to mention just for the cover, but one of the great hard bop sessions. When you see hard bop in the dictionary, you see a picture of Cool Strutton. But this you know, an amazing lineup. Donald Byrd, Hank Mopley, Sonny Clark, Paul Chambers, Art Blakey. Why didn't they release this? Is just beyond me. I don't think this even came out as an LT pressing. Um, but testament to Don was and all the fine folks at Blue Note that they did put it out now because it is a stellar hard bop record. Everything is so beautifully organized and so tight. They're at the height, 1959, of their hard bop mastery. I mean, they're really at the height of it. Because their they're playing is just so assured and confident and really just perfect. It's not throwaway, but you can tell it's just another day at the office for these guys. Um, and saying that these are, you know, classic Sonny Clark tunes, he had an unusual bend, a different lilt. He took different figures and his solos as well. He never takes the expected solos. They're not really soul-based or blues-based in the way that you know, some of like a Horace Parlin or something. He's a, he's a, he's a very witty uh, player and a witty composer. And everybody steps up to match that on this record. The tunes are so well organized. There's one tune that just stops. It almost stops like, the so you, it's almost like the 16 bars of a solo isn't finished and boom, they just, they were just knocking the stuff out of the park back then. And I imagine this is from the session. Beautiful, laminated. Beautiful gatefold artwork. Modern collector's items, which let me say again, as I've said before in our little group, this is a golden era for jazz reissues. When I began work in the 1990s, back in the good old days, and I worked at Tower Records as a jazz buyer at Lincoln Center, we used to get in Japanese imports and we would just be stunned. They were so beautiful. The, the Japanese CD imports in the early 90s, they were just beautiful you just, you know we did nothing like that it's really only now if we go back and look at what Columbia was doing with uh, the miles re all the miles CDs and the um, Louis Armstrong Louis Armstrong boxes those are nice they're really really nice but they didn't they don't have that beauty and the packaging wasn't quite as nice uh, I have a, a Billy Holiday complete on uh, I mean it's like it's like a scrapbook on Columbia and the thing is almost falling apart uh, but those blue note, well not blue note, but the Japanese packaging of jazz CDs in the early 90s was stunning. And it's really not until now. I mean, Music Matters, I guess, sort of set the bar. But the tone poets, which to me sound better than Music Matters, have, you know, they're doing amazing work. And this falls right in with all the other records they've done. They also recently re released McCoy Tyner Expansions. I'm going to do a separate video on that. That is, this is good. That is great. That just knocked my socks off. There's so much music. So many different styles and inferences on expansions. Anyway, great Sonny Clark record. If somebody says, what's hard bop, point to this record. I'm blessed that Jem Karosman, the, my longtime publicist friend at Blue Note, sent me these three. I was going to do an expanded review at, uh, at Stereophile, but that turned into an expanded review of the Joe Henderson uh, box set on Mosaic. But I listened to these. They're dead silent. They're dead flat. From that ass point, this, this is a great pressing. This. The word was on the street, everyone says, if that crazy bitch hadn't shot Lee Morgan, he would have gone on to much different terrain. He was breaking out of hard bop. And this album does sort of attest to that. His last record on Blue Note, it's a, uh, I believe it's taken from a three or four or five night session. It's 12 LPs at the uh, Lighthouse, which I believe was in Hermosa Beach. And you can really hear the audience, but it's all, you feel like you're in the audience because it's, 
the way they've mixed everything is really beautiful. You can hear like banter a little bit on the stage, people talking in the audience, but it doesn't get in the way. And the band's on fire with Lee and Benny Maupin leading the way with Jimmy Merritt on drums and uh, on bass and Mickey Roker on drums, which is such an unusual choice. Mickey Roker is a real wild card in the world of jazz drumming from that period. As great as Philly Joe Jones, but then he can turn around and play with Sonny Rollins, which obviously Philly Joe Jones did too. But, uh, you know, Mickey could float through any situation and add that similar sort of pop that uh, Sonny Rollins had. But on this record, he's a perfect foil and Jimmy Merritt to hold the fort down when Benny Maupin goes out to outer space, which he does very, very often. He turns this into an avant-garde recording. Now, I'm not sure if the original two LPs or the recent CDs that came out a few years ago reissues of this record if Benny Maupin goes out on those. But whatever that may be, this is an additional 10 LPs to check that out. And um, you and you can hear in Lee's solos that it ain't the old hard bop Lee. Some of the tunes are ha like hard bop. Some of the tunes remind me of latter period Blue Note, Jackie McLean, like on time. They're very brisk and punchy and they're going somewhere, you know. Uh, maybe he was listening to Jackie McLean, I don't know. But it's not the typical hard bop template. This is Lee pushing, pushing his band. Even when he takes solos after Benny Maupin, he, um, he's more thoughtful. You can hear him thinking, setting back, evaluating things a little bit more. Then on a hard bop record, he's just so at home, he probably doesn't even need to think. But on these recordings, you can really hear where he was headed, and that's a great thing. His 12 LPs for everybody, I think they're like 350 bucks. I'm sure it'll become a collector's item. I don't know if you were a Lee Morgan completist, and there are so many Lee Morgan records, obviously one of the most popular artists on Blue Note, along with Hank Mobley. I'd say if you're a Lee Morgan fan, you can get this. And as Zev Feldman comments in the, the interview that comes right after this, you can time travel. But if you want to hear where Lee Morgan was heading, this is a place to go. And I imagine the CD box set will cost a little less, or you can hear it on Spotify for next to nothing. And Lee don't get nothing then, baby. Anyway, thanks a lot. I hope you stay tuned for this uh, revealing interview with the producer of this Lee Morgan 12 LP box set, Zev Feldman. Thank you.